May we have the time of confession of faith, Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. May we all greet one another. Let us raise the partisan of light. With that, the title for today is The Way for All of Us to Live. There is a phrase that sparks passion in people. It is, age is just a number. What I often say is that I'm 39 years old. Why do I say that? I say that because the passion that I had when I was 39 right now and when Caleb was 39 is the same. I still have the passion of when I was 39. It is said that there is a saying that lifts the mood of the other person and activities within the relationship, and that is, I missed you. I hope you try to find this confession to and say it to the person next to you, I missed you. Even if you really didn't miss them, may you be able to say, I missed you. In our walk of faith, having the heart of wanting to see that person is normal. If I see elders, If I perhaps did not see that person, I ask, how come that elder is not here? He's very tall. His name is Ijoan, and I haven't seen him for about a month. Is he sick? Is he having difficulties? in parking, it may seem like I'm just, you know, overlooking it, but I see everyone. I have very good eyesight. The heart of wanting to see Jesus Christ. Paul had that, wanting to see Christ. Like so. As a spiritual family, wanting to see each other, co-workers, not wanting to not see that person more than a week is not normal. You want to see them more than want them once a week. Every Sunday, we meet with the pastors, but we say, oh, it's been a while. Pastor Yu tells me, if you're not at a meeting, it's very difficult because it feels so empty. It's the relationship of wanting to see each other that hard. It really activates our spirituality, saying, I missed you, change in vitality, especially when you miss that person, your spiritual growth happens as well. The moment you hate seeing the other person, you will spiritually regress. But if you really miss that person, it's that you're doing your ministry. If you don't miss that person, then it's that you're not doing your ministry and you're not having the spiritual communication. There are some instances where you don't want to see a person and that's spiritually falling behind already. So within the church, there shouldn't be people who build walls within the church. 
we're all within the Holy Spirit. How can you say and judge saying, oh, I don't like that person, I don't want to see that person? God will rebuke you. If there are any unnecessary misunderstandings, you have to clear them up first in order to receive grace and be able to pray. Jesus also says this in Matthew 5, 23-24. So if you are offering your gift at an altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gifts there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled with your brother and then come offer your gift. This is the words of Jesus. If you live as a child of God and build walls against each other, building walls, God will not accept that worship. You go and reconcile. First of all, what is important is to have peace and success in worship. So there are so many people who are unable to have success in worship. There are many churches who have problems and fights within the churches. It's for their own benefit. Like the title of today's sermon, we must go towards the direction of the wall of the way for all of us to live. From a spiritual point of view, we are not beings who live for ourselves. Being within the church, going to church for a long time, within the team of three, coming into teams and groups, for those people, they should not have the church duty. So within the church, we should not look for our benefit. Although it may seem like things are going well, other people will not come to church because of that person because they receive scars. May you be able to clear that all up? Coming to church and asking for money. If you want to lend them money, think that you will not receive it back. There are many people who receive scars because of that relationship. Because you feel bad. And you don't want to meet that person. So how can you receive grace from worship? What is it that I'm trying to say? In order to receive grace, if there is anything that is hindering you from that worship, may you be able to clear that up. If you succeed in worship, everything will be cleared up. Because to succeed in worship, you have to hold on to the word and you have to make it yours. Just participating is not succeeding in worship. You can do it for decades. You will not have any evidence answers and you will not be able to live the life as the witness. So it will not be fun. You can come to church, but it's the same. You have to be able to experience the fulfillment of the word. Today's title is the way for all of us to live. All of us must live. We are not beings who live for ourselves. According to the Bible, we are public figures. Why? The moment that you believe in Jesus Christ, you are the ambassadors of Christ because you're the ambassadors. Believing in Jesus Christ, it means that I am the ambassador, being a public figure. It is the official recognition. So public figures should not live only for themselves. Thus, we must move onto the path to save all people. The target must be going beyond me, my family, and go beyond the spiritual family, unbelievers around us, and the unbelievers in the 237 countries around the world. That is God's will and plan for us who are saved.
So if we go beyond our country, they're all less off. America is like that too. I go all around the world, and they have no vision, and it's so difficult. Missions, evangelism camp, they cannot even imagine it. They don't have money. They don't have time. They don't have faith. The only country that can do this is Korea, and especially Yeon Church that has the gospel. Is this just a coincidence? Are you just going to say me, 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 and end your life? The church wants to do two, three, seven, and go out to the five thousand. People groups, but are you just going to think about yourself when our church is going to go beyond as we picked out the nations? Through last week's sermon, we looked at how God was opening a new path for the European evangelization. The first journey was the evangelization of Lydia and her family. Lydia and her family. They have met Paul in today's text beyond the evangelization of Lydia and her family, the journey of how the Philippi region is being evangelized is recorded. The Philippine evangelization journey in today's text was an important time schedule that became the fuse for European evangelization. The stream of the covenant has flowed until now. And now it is moving towards the evangelization of the two, three, seven nations and five thousand people groups. Like so, the gospel is the way to save all of us. I bless all members of Yohan Church in the name of the Lord that there will be evidence to be used as pillars of the fulfillment of God's salvation plan for families, regions, and the whole world beyond ourselves. Number one, spiritual action. Acts sixteen. 16-17 After Lydia received the gospel, a significant movement of the word of God unfolded in her home, and Apostle Paul explored into the region of Philippi. As a result, he went to the place of prayer and the essential point of contact for proclaiming the gospel. Through the mention of this place of prayer, we can understand that there was no synagogue for the Jews in Philippi at that time. Additionally, an unique expression appears in the text. We. We went to the place of prayer. Why is the expression we used? We can discern that Luke, the author of Acts, had joined Paul's team at this point. In Acts 16.10, we can see the first occurrence of we that is indicating that Luke joined Paul in Taurus. Why did he join him? Biblical scholar Barclay mentioned that Luke joined as Paul's physician, as Paul was not in good health. Later, Luke became a fellow worker, witness, and physician throughout Paul's mission journey, and we can see that he was with Paul until his final moments in Second Timothy four eleven. All of his life, he was with Paul until his last moment. Luke was with him. Like this, the, for the sake of the gospel movement, God has given each, us each different talents. Why? It is so that we can work together in oneness to advance the gospel. It is to save people. In today's passage, Paul's team encounters a slave girl who is possessed by a spirit of prophecy. As they go to the place of prayer, this girl follows them and cries out, "These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation all day long." Seeing this, it seems like the spirit is preaching. 
as if she is evangelizing. Being possessed, what does that mean? Being possessed by a spirit signifies an understanding of the spiritual world. Although it is not the Holy Spirit, but the evil spirit causing the possession, it still recognizes the spiritual reality. For those who don't have much faith, may you tag along with the shaman team and see what happens in the field. This slave girl knew the spiritual world. She knew of the spiritual reality, being possessed by evil spirits. In Luke 4, we also see that those possessed by demons exactly knew who Jesus was. Precisely. However, the key is that these spirits have knowledge but do not have faith. What is important is that the disciples did not know. The evil spirits do not believe. They know. In today's passage, there is also a subtle hint of sad Satan's crafty tactics. In the original text, the phrase, the way of salvation, does not have an article. The presence or absence of an article is related to the absolute uniqueness of salvation. If there is an article, it means that there is only one way. However, in the passage, the absence of the article suggests that there are multiple ways to salvation and that Paul's team was just presenting one of them. And this dilutes the gospel of the absolute uniqueness of salvation through Jesus Christ alone. There are many instances like this as well. It is very misleading, and it is the cunning strategy of Satan. Such incidents are still common today. Many professors who teach at theological schools without believing themselves are there. They are supporters of liberal theology and religious pluralism, only accepting what can be understood by human reasoning. What men can understand is that there is no word of faith in liberal theology. The concept of faith does not exist in their world because they have to understand. Additionally, simply put, Yonsei Seoul, Iwa University Theology School, they're all liberal theology. It is modern theology. So you must not just go How can women not bring lunch when this little boy brought lunch? It's not that God performed the miracle. It seems very logical and realistic. And people may think, oh yeah, that may be true. Yes, this little child brought a lunchbox. So how can adults not bring lunch boxes? The miracle of the loaves of bread and fish is not believed. I went to Israel and saw the church and saw the site myself. Additionally, if you were to visit a shamanistic ritual site, you would hear many people say that attending church in the past was fertile. They say, I went to church, I went to Pure Gospel Church before. 80% of them had said they went to church because they were so afflicted. But what is important? 
What is important is if that person really accepted Jesus as the Christ or not. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Then you come out from your fate and destiny. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, you become a temple of God. It's not lying or conning. The moment that you accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in you. So that's why you become a temple. Eternally, He is with you. So the evil spirits cannot come in you. So what does that mean? Jesus is the Savior, the answer to all your problems. But the evil spirits come because that is not believed. Because if you precisely, exactly accept it as that is, you will not receive the evil spirits. It's not just that you will not receive it, but you'll be able to chase the evil spirits away. So he may deceive you in your thoughts and throw snares, questioning. Am I a child of God? Do I have the power to chase away demons? Do I have the power to do world evangelization? You doubt that. So in the walk of faith, you do it without any vitality. It's so bored and lukewarm. Is it that you believe or not? So what is important? It is the word of God. If the word of God is firmly rooted, then you will not be deceived. So what do you have to do? You have to be 24 hours with the pulpit message. You will not be able to waver. Look at verse 18. May you call on to the name of Jesus Christ and the evil spirits will go out. You don't have to say, oh, elder, please come. Oh, pastor, please come. You have the authority. So in your town around you, just say in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ is important. There are many times I did it day and night. Upon the name of Jesus Christ, he flees. Apostle Paul did not fall for Satan's strategies or engage in spiritual warfare. He casted out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, the demon-possessed girl was restored to her complete state. How joyful and celebratory that must have been. However, from Satan's perspective, it was bewailed. Through the demon-possessed girl, the owner was making money, so he had pressed to bring charges against Paul's team. Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown into prison with their feet fastened in stocks and were imprisoned in deep darkness. One of the instances of Paul was that he was three times beaten with rods, as it is mentioned in 2 Corinthians 11.25. However, in such circumstances, Paul did not complain or hold any resentment towards God. Instead, he continued to engage in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. What is important is the spiritual fight, the spiritual action. Verse 
However, in the circumstances that he was not, he was put in, Paul did not complain or hold any resentment towards God. Instead, he continued to engage in spiritual warfare, in the spiritual battle against the dark forces, firmly enriched in the Philippian region. Paul was not deceived. In fact, Paul was a Roman citizen. During that time, the Roman citizens were entitled to a fair and rule, just trial process. And it was prohibited to physically punish or imprison a Roman citizen whose guilt has not been convicted. However, Paul did not reveal his Roman citizenship. What could have been the reason for this? The owner of the demon-possessed girl accused Paul and Silas for being Jews and stirred up a great commotion in Philippi, which led to their arrest. If Paul had declared himself as a Roman citizen, it might have hindered the mission of saving the Jews. At that moment, Paul's priority was always of the benefit of the gospel. Believers sometimes witness the gospel, but there are times that they may be misunderstood by the suffering losses and persecution because of their belief in Jesus. This is even more so for those in non-believing families. But at this time, I hope you will respond spiritually like Paul saying, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principles and powers and the rulers of the eyes and do not be deceived. It is not by f the flesh and blood. When you see it from a spiritual perspective, there is no reason to be deceived. May you put on the full armor of God and fight the spiritual battle. Do not fight the spirit, the physical battle. I always tell you, I see it from a spiritual perspective, so I do not have physical fights. There are many instances where there may be times when I get angry. I've done many sports, too, so I'm able to do so. But we must interpret it spiritually, the spiritual battle, especially at your homes, especially amongst the couples, then there's no reason to fight. So someone said, oh, my wife is giving me a difficult time. So I said, pray in the name of Jesus Christ for Satan to flee, not your wife to flee. I bless all believers of you on church in the name of the Lord that they may come, the spiritual people who expand the kingdom of God through the choices and actions of the benefit of the gospel under any circumstance. Number two, the partisan of light. Verse 26. Apostle Paul and Silas were beaten and put in stocks that would injure them even with the slightest movement and were imprisoned in a cold prison. But even within such hard situa harsh situations, they prayed and praised God. What does this mean? It was, be it was Paul and Silas who built a tower of light in prison. If you look at the original language, the prayers and hymns of Paul and Silas did not end even once. Think about it. They were in prison. 
How cold must have they been? But what is important here is that they still praised God. The partisan of light was raised. When the great earthquake occurred, all the bonds fell off. What is especially important is that all the prisoners in the prison heard the prayers and hymns of Paul and Silas. So hymns give miracles. The word used here also did not refer to the concept of hearing a general sound. It is a unique word that mentions that they listen to a song or performance with pleasure. Simply put, Paul and Silas exerted spiritual influence onto these prisoners. They were inspired spiritually. It's not that they just listened to a song. It's not just any hymnal, but they were inspired spiritually. Who are they? How can they be in blood being beaten, not having any resentment, instead praising God? How can they do so? So they started to listen. Even though they were beaten and chained up like that, they did not grumble or complain, but rather they praised and prayed to God with joy and listened to the voice of God. When Paul and Silas built a tower of light in prison, an amazing miracle took place. A great earthquake occurred and the prison grounds moved. The doors opened and all the prisoners were freed from their bonds. We can see that God had released them at this time, the jailer who was guarding the prison woke up and saw that the prison doors were open. According to the Roman law at the time, when the prisoner escaped, the jailer who guarded the prisoner had to take crime instead. So in the moment that the guard was to take his life, with a loud voice, Paul stopped him from killing himself. Verse 29. Verse 30. Then the jailer takes Paul and Silas out and says something particular. Teachers, what must I do to be saved? How can he say such a thing? Without saying a word, this jailer must have wondered, just like the prisoners in prison, why Paul and Silas were praising, praying, and giving glory to God even though that they were beaten to death and imprisoned, being in chains. He questioned this. What on earth do they have that they can sing hymns, pray, and rejoice in such a situation? He could not understand. Because he was a jailer, he knew why Paul and Silas were imprisoned, and he knew that they would have the true answer. They came because they chased out demons. They have something. They must have the answer. When he asked how to be saved, Paul gave the precise answer. Verse 31. And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved in you and your household. Jesus Christ is the answer to all of our life's problems. More precisely, it said Jesus is the Christ. What is the core of our ministry? It's that Jesus is the Christ. It is nothing else. 
It said Jesus is the Christ. Believing in Jesus brings personal salvation and even family salvation. This word of God will be fulfilled immediately. Verses 32 to 34. Reads, and he spoke of the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took him to the hour of the night where they washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into the house and set food before them, and rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. The result of Paul and Silas. Building a watchtower of life was the evangelization of the jailer and all his family. Furthermore, the jailer's family and Lydia's family had laid the foundation of the Philippian church. A spiritual ripple effect occurs when the watchtower of light is firmly established within us. So may you pray, starting from today, no matter what excuses you may have. There are no people who are within the situation like Paul. So be able to pray saying, may you raise the watchtower of light. Because within you there is the partisan of prayer, of the word. The gospel is meant to cascade from person, family, and region. The book of Acts emphasizes that it is not just Cornelius who was evangelized, but Cornelius's family as well. Lydia and her family, the jailer and his family. The ripple effect can happen when the lampstand is firmly established within us. This is the same as the team of three and the three movements. The team of three in the start 10,000 movement is activated. It is naturally led to the 4,000 watchtower movement and the 237 healing movement. In the name of the Lord, I bless all believers of you and church to be raised as the main figures of family evangelization, internal, national, and domestic evangelization, world evangelization. This is the conclusion. There's a term called fishing lamp. It refers to a lantern used to catch fish that are attracted to light. If you go to Jeju Island or the East Coast, you can easily see the fishing boats with incredibly bright lights in the middle of the night. Squid and fish rush to them. The church should be a natural spiritual fishing lamp. Each of us should be a spiritual lamp. It is being a partisan of light. A fishing boat's light is the bait for death, but spiritual light is a tool for life. In other words, it is to be the true partisan of light. You are the light of the world. So in the name of the Lord, I bless all believers of you and church to be the absolute disciples of Christ who will fulfill the mission of the sage as the watchtower of light to go forward in the way of saving all people. May we pray. Dear Father God, may we be able to save all people as the watchtower of light. May we be able to save the world and all the nations. So every day to many people, may we give answers and life giving them encouragement and help. And may we be able to be the main figures of church revival. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.